Hey everybody, welcome to Birdtech. In this episode, we're gonna be asking the question, which makes more money, iOS developers or Android developers? All right, welcome back. Before we start this video, I wanna make sure that you like and subscribe. The more likes and subscribers we get, the more content we can make. So if you wanna to learn to code in 2020, where should you start? Well, you should probably start with mobile app development. But the thing is, is that we're not gonna be talking about that in this video. We're gonna be talking about which developer makes more money, iOS developers or Android developers. Now there's a lot of pros and cons for each Android and iOS, but I'm gonna end this video for you here right now. If you are a fan of iOS or if you're a fan of Android and you really like one or the other, the debate is over. You should just do what you like to work on. If you really like working on iOS, then just be an iOS developer. If you really like working on Android, then just work on Android. However, if you wanna choose in between the two, you need to stay listening because I'm gonna give you an analysis of which one makes more money. So here's the thing, if you look at the numbers, then iOS development and Android development roughly pay about the same amount, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. If you look at the raw numbers, iOS developers tend to pay a little bit more. And there's a good reason for that. The reason is, is that there are less iOS developers out there. And that is key to understanding the entire argument. But at the same time though, there are a lot more Android jobs out there. So if you look at the volume, that is the total amount being spent on iOS development and the total amount being spent on Android development, Android definitely takes a cake. There's a lot more money being pushed into that kind of development. So let's take a look at some of the pros of Android development and then some of the pros of iOS development. So in Android development, you get to use languages that are pretty much universal. You get to use Java and you get to use Kotlin. Now Java is really universal, meaning that if you're working for a startup or a company doing Android development and that company goes under, you can find a job in Java somewhere else because Java is used from everything from Android development to medical equipment to construction equipment. There is a ton of use for Java. And if you lose your job, then you'll be able to find another job easily without retraining your skill set. And this is why a lot of computer science degrees teach Java because it's fairly universal and because it's so widely used, it's not going to go away anytime soon. In fact, there are legacy systems out there that use C++ and C just because the companies and the organizations that use them have never bothered to update their software. So that's probably the biggest pro of Android, that there is a lot of job stability in the ecosystem and in the program. There's also a lot more jobs out there because there is so much Android development going on. Not only is Android used for mobile devices such as your phone or your watch, but there's a lot of other devices that use Android out there and they all need Android developers. So if you wanna become an Android developer, there's a lot of work out there. So because there's so much demand, chances are there are lots of entry level jobs for Android and if you again lose your job, you can maybe find another job quite easily. So let's take a look at some of the pros of being an iOS developer. One of the biggest pros is that there are a lot less supply of iOS developers, meaning that there are simply just less iOS developers out there. So if you want to learn Android or iOS, one of the things you have to understand is that they're pretty much the same. They take about the same amount of time to master and they're about the same difficulty level. Sure, there are a few things that are harder to do in iOS that are easier to do in Android and vice versa, but the fact remains is that if you want to become a good Android or iOS developer, basically you need to understand that it takes the same amount of time to become good at both. Even though there are fewer jobs out there, because there's less supply, you might find it just a little bit easier to find a job. So one of the things about the iOS ecosystem is that whenever a business wants to make an app for their business, the number one thing they want to do is make an iOS app. They don't want to make an Android app first unless their core business is Android users, but that's seldom the case. I would say most of the time, if a company wants to make a mobile app, which is generally where a lot of the iOS development is done today, then they want to do iOS first. And because of that, they need to have a really good first impression. Thus, they have to have really good developers. So if you are a really good iOS developer, then chances are you can do this kind of work. So if a company wants to make money with iOS, then chances are iOS is a good bet because the users pay 
pay a bit more. Even though Android users tend to make a larger sum of money, they have to acquire more users. So if you're trying to get more app installs and make more money off of your mobile app, you have to really understand the fact that it's going to cost money per user. And the thing about iOS development is while the cost per user is slightly higher than Android, that user is more likely to pay. So that's why a lot of companies choose iOS first. So the other thing about iOS development is that because there's less supply, then there's a lot of junior positions open. And since there's a lot of junior positions that are open, you might find it just a little bit easier to find a job than Android. Just because, again, there's a lot less iOS developers. Now, I haven't mentioned the fact that Apple computers cost a little bit more than PC. Now, I used to be a PC person all the way, and then iOS became a really big hit around 2010. So I bought a Mac mini and I made a ton of iOS apps. And my career for Ever changed because of that. So if you only are a PC person or you're only an Android person, then perhaps moving to iOS might make you more money in the end. Another thing about the iOS development ecosystem is that it updates quite a bit. And one of the things that a lot of companies do is they want to use the maximum amount of technology in their iOS app. And that requires you, the developer, to learn things as quickly as possible. So if you can learn new things in iOS quickly, then you'll, chances are you'll find a job. What that also means is that if you manage to find a job and you're maybe an intern or you're a junior developer, if you learn the new stuff quickly, then chances are you're going to exceed in your career more than the people who don't. And the reason why is that if there's a new feature that comes out in the next iOS version and you become a master of that on your weekend or you learn in your spare time, then your boss is absolutely gonna notice that. Now every year, iOS updates in a fairly significant way. So Mammoth Interactive has been producing Swift tutorials since its inception and every year we have to update our iOS course because lots of times there is so much stuff different that we have to make an entire new course. Now when Swift first came out, this was very true. The difference between Swift 1 and Swift 2 was quite dramatic. Nowadays, Swift is a lot more stable and you probably don't have to learn as many new techniques as you did in the past. However, you still have to learn new things because every year Apple comes out with the newest technology and you have to learn that technology. Android does the same thing, but it's a little bit more pronounced in the iOS environment. So let's take a look at some of the cons between Android and iOS. Let's start with Android. So one of the things about Android is that because there are so many developers, chances are there is a developer somewhere in the world that can do a job. And with the COVID-19 pandemic and people working from home, employers are gonna be able to find the cheapest price for the cheapest developer anywhere. And that can mean anywhere from the United States to Eastern Europe to India or elsewhere. So what that means is that if you're in a high wage country, then perhaps you might be outsourced to a lower wage area. Now, just because there is a lower wage area doing the same work, that doesn't mean that you personally are going to be out of a job. If you're really good and your communication skills are good, and if you're really good to work with and you get the job done, then you are going to be hired and you're going to be kept on and you're going to be paid the big bucks to be Developer. If you're not any of those things, then perhaps your job might be outsourced. But this is the biggest con, in my opinion, with Android, is that because it's so open and there's so many developers out there, that it might be hard to separate yourself from the noise. So let's take a look at some of the cons of iOS. So the biggest con with iOS is that Swift can only be used mostly within their iOS or macOS ecosystem. And what that means is that if you are out of a job or if for whatever reason the demand for iOS developers suddenly drops, then what will happen is that you will have a harder time finding a new job. Whereas with Java, if you lose your job, then perhaps you'll be able to find a new job almost immediately. But with Swift, it's going to be a little bit different. Now, personally, I like Swift. It's one of my favorite coding languages, and I wish Swift was used elsewhere because I would personally love it. And that's maybe a topic for another video. But for the most part, if you do lose your job, it might be harder to find a job, especially if the demand for iOS developers go down. That's fairly unlikely, but you never know, it could happen. So, what's the verdict? If you're on the fence of becoming an iOS developer or an Android developer, which one should you choose? Well, I think you should know by watching this video is that you should become an iOS developer. If you don't have a Mac, then I suggest you get one. The reason is, is that not only do iOS developers pay a little bit more than Android developers, 
What the big thing is that there's a lot less supply of iOS developers. And this is something that's happened to me personally. Whenever there is too much supply of one thing, even if the demand is really high, I find it hard to break out of the noise. If there is much less supply, then it's easier to stand out because simply there's less supply. So the other thing about the Mac ecosystem is that it is a somewhat luxury product, meaning that people who generally tend to like luxury items tend to go with Mac. And because of this, people who buy luxury items tend to pay a bit more for a little bit less work. So another thing about the Mac ecosystem is that people who buy them tend to buy luxury items. And one of the things I've learned as an entrepreneur over the years is that people who buy luxury items tend to pay a bit more, and that makes a lot of sense. Now, as a person who is servicing this luxury market, you have to provide better service, very good quality, but if you're going to get up and do something in that day, it makes sense to do a good job and it makes sense to provide such a good quality product. The other thing about the luxury market that a lot of people don't ever tell you is that you have to be really good at soft skills and really good at your personal customer service. And what I mean by that is that people who buy luxury products don't mind paying the extra price, but they want a good experience. And part of that experience is a good interaction between the person that they are buying the services from. This is something I wish I knew when I was 18 years old. So the verdict of this video is that you should choose iOS development if you're on the fence of becoming an Android developer or an iOS developer. Let me know in the comments, should you become an iOS developer or an Android developer? What has been your experience? I wanna hear your comments down below. Remember that this channel doesn't do a Patreon and we sell our digital products down below. The more money we get from the products that you buy below, the more content we can make. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We have everything from iOS tutorials to machine learning tutorials to web development tutorials and more. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month. We have monthly and yearly options. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. Not only do you make this YouTube channel possible, you make Mammoth Interactive possible so we can make more and more courses. Our goal is to get to 10,000 monthly subscribers. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in another video.